Okay, so I'm the guy wearing the big Texas hat. Like, and they say, well, why are you wearing that Texas hat? Because we do business with Rackspace down in San Antonio. And I went to uh, the uh, cowboy dance hall, which is right next to the Rackspace uh, headquarters. And uh, I saw all these cowboys wearing these Texas hats. Wow, that's a nice Texas hat. So uh, uh, recently, we've been doing performance testing and security testing at the same time. And they asked me, well, what are you doing in the security testing space? I said, well, white hat testing. So that's the reason for that. Uh, but I also have a funny story uh, related to that. So when I went to the store to buy the hat, I have a really big head. This, this is, uh, let's see, 61 is the size, 7 and 5 eighths. So I put on their biggest hat, and the gal who's selling me the hat behind me says, oh my god. <laughs> I turn around and said, it's not that big of a head. But I definitely am a, a thinker, and so what I'm going to be... What I'm going to be presenting today is um, kind of some of the thinking that I've been doing over the last 12 years or so. So uh, I'm Frank Cohen. I'm the founder at Advance. We're a company that um, that I founded 12 years ago at a time when I saw that developers weren't testing and testers weren't coding. And I knew that was going to be a problem because I looked at what Google was doing and. Uh, you know, you just type into the Google search field and uh, all of a sudden it would start giving you suggestions. And that, that was like the first application of Ajax that I saw. And I thought, well, if you're a tester, how are you ever going to write like a test script in Load Runner that would be able to, to make that, that app work, uh, you know, without doing some coding? So I would talk to the testers. I went to the tester uh, uh, in, uh, conferences like the STAR conference, and I said to the testers, I said, you all really need to start coding. And what was their reaction back to me? Well, we're testers, we don't code. And then I went to the Google Developer Conference, and I said well, basically the same thing, but this was to an audience of developers. I said, I said well, you know, you developers are going to have to start testing. Because the testers don't have to test this stuff that you're going to give them. And the developers' reaction was equally inflamed. They're like, you know, oh, well, we're developers, we don't test. So what's happened in the last 12 years is that developers now basically have, have standardized around agile methodology. They're building unit tests. And then the testers themselves are seeing that they can get further in their careers if they understand what those unit tests are doing um, and, and to be able to repurpose them. And that repurposing idea is something that, that, I've, uh, that I espoused early on. And what, what really brought all of this together was continuous integration and all the hard work that's gone into Hudson and Jenkins. And, and so I'm going to show you, show you how this kind of played out like over a, over a dozen years. Now the, the thing is that this is an experience that I had at helping Best Buy achieve uh, success with their apps. And I'm going to show you kind of how Best Buy does continuous integration and how they marry the efforts of the developers with the efforts of the testers around CI. Hey, this is Frank Cohen. Can you hear me? Hey. 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 Okay. So the thing about Best Buy is they said, okay, we're going to be hosting about 450 services, and each of those services are going to do something that our web app developers are going to, to consume. So like, if you go to the bestbuy.com site and you type in your uh, zip code, there's actually a workflow that is implemented as a TIPCO business work service that does the actual lookup to show you where the local stores are for that zip code. And then it's up to the web developers to like consume that service and then do the presentation. So if something goes wrong in that system, who do you think gets blamed first? It's the guy who wrote the workflow. It's the business works engineer. When it could very easily be the, the web developer. And so trying to figure that out for an organization like Best Buy was really a big challenge for them. They had um, uh, 6,500 engineers and only 65 of them were um, actually Best Buy employees. The rest of them were working at WePro and Accenture. Uh oh, did I drop that? OK, good. <laughs> so um, the, the question for their developers were, um, oh, well, the testers are showing that one of these um, services on our website isn't working. Well, how do we figure out what the root cause is of, of that problem? And, uh, and Best Buy, I really liked what Jenkins was doing in terms of like continuous integration. But there wasn't like a database of the results of that continuous integration for the developers to look back on to figure out what the problem was. 
I mean, as developers, we want like kind of a, a steady state to look into. Um, you know, when something isn't working, to say, okay, well, it's not working in this particular state, so you can figure out what the root cause is. So, um, you know, even though Best Buy had adopted Jenkins, um, they didn't adopt kind of like a database of results, um, results that the, the developers could look at. So what we did was basically extend uh, Jenkins um, to, to handle all aspects of testing. So for Best Buy, they have a combination of functional testing, performance testing, they do security testing, uh, and then even uh, um, uh, production monitoring. And they needed a, a single way to kind of repurpose the tests that they had to do these, all these different types of tests and then do it in a way that the developers could look at after the fact and be able to narrow down into what the root cause of the, of the performance bottlenecks are. The other thing is that even though the testers that uh, Best Buy hired uh, did know something about coding, um, they, a lot of them came from kind of HP's QTP product background. And so they were really used to kind of sitting in the, um, in the keyword mode of QTP, which is basically a point and click interface. There, there's no real scripting to it. There is like an expert tab that you can switch into, but there's such a huge divide in the testing space between people who know how to operate in the key, keyword mode versus the expert mode. And when you're talking to somebody who likes keyword, you really have to provide them with a record and playback capability. They don't like scripting. Uh, whereas somebody who's used to being in that expert mode, that's all they want to do is visual basic scripting. Um, and, it, and that's kind of a shame because if you look at testing, it is software development of its own sort. And so I recommend to every tester that they learn how to code because eventually that will move them forward in their own careers. And then the companies that are making uh, paying for their, their time will wind up with more maintainable tests uh, over time. Um, so the, the issue was um, providing a, a, an, an environment that provided record and playback capability for tests, but then could also easily uh, migrate into uh, doing um, scripting uh, or, or code development for these tests. Uh, we also wanted to give them a, a, an instant way to like look back in time and, and see, well, did this particular test fail at a particular time, and uh, how does that relate to the test that just most recently ran? Uh, and then also, because CloudBee's uh, hosting of Jenkins uh, is entirely cloud-based, there, there needs to be a way of running multiple tests concurrently. Um, and, uh, uh, and that was a problem for some of the legacy test products that are out there. They, they just weren't written for the cloud, so they can't handle a bunch of things happening at the same time. So the, uh, the platform that I invented in, uh, as push to test uh, which was TestMaker, has a variety of different ways of repurposing tests to be functional tests and performance tests and, and uh, even production monitors. And so the, the protocols in the test suite offering is centered around uh, these four categories. So testing of web or AJAX or mobile apps. Uh, that, that would be a scripting in uh, our own record and playback capability, which I call the AppFans Designer. Uh, but it also could be using like Selenium IDE as a recording capability or expressing your Selenium scripts in a high-level language like Java or Python or Ruby. I also very much like what the SOAP UI project has been doing in terms of uh, making it really fun and easy to graphically build a test suite of a SOAP or REST-based system. Um, and so um, what Advance has done is to create essentially a cloud version of SOAP UI that doesn't require you to install SOAP UI as a desktop utility. Instead, you can all run it from the, the browser. Um, we also... Um, provide this service so that if you've built your systems on top of TIPCO or IBM or Oracle or JBox um, or any of the uh, projects that are out there that are doing message-based systems, then this would work with it too. And then finally, uh, any Oracle Forms app. So I, I wasn't sure about the connectivity here, so I recorded this video of, of the authoring. And this, this is uh, me running on my Mac with uh, Safari and a I have AppVance Enterprise running from the cloud. We've got an Amazon Web Service instance that, that's running this environment. And so I can define like the starting URL for a, a mobile app or for a, a web app, and then choose which browser I want to use. And it, it supports all of the browsers. Um, and so the, uh, the app itself would come up. And this is a, a tutorial app that we ship, which is an Ajax app. And there's about 1,000 web objects inside that, that interface. And you can see I'm just like, kind of typing through it. And on the right side, that designer um, is keeping track of all the uh, things that I'm doing within that app. 
And um, so it's creating a, a test script. Uh, there isn't, uh, when I want to play back the test, uh, I can choose which browser I want to play back on. And this way, I have an interactive environment for me to be able to record and play back the, the test that I want to operate against this web app. Now, it's, it's kind of small type, but you might notice that there aren't any pause or wait commands. Uh, we have a technology called UX Avatar, which we, uh, which we developed, that injects itself into those Ajax apps. And so you don't need to add pause commands because the UX Avatar is going to take care of all of that asynchronously for you. This is the uh, SOAP UI uh, project that we call Service Suite, which is now deployed as a, uh, uh, as a cloud-based instance. So you don't have to install SOAP UI anymore. You can just run it from here. And you can see that this is showing you like uh, building a test suite where uh, back on the left I had uh, the requests and on the right I had the uh, responses. So all of that's cloud-based now. Now the thing that glues us all together with, uh, with Jenkins is something we call Scenario Builder. And this is another cloud-based utility for building a document, an XML document, called a test scenario. The test scenario itself allows it, us to identify which tests we want to run. So like if I had a, a, a SOAP UI test first, then I could run that as the first step of a test. And then the second step of the test might be calling a Java JUnit test or calling one of those recordings of a, a web app test. And so this is, this is me. Uh, setting up that, that use case within the scenario builder. Now there's a, another section here which is going to identify where it's going to run the test. So it might be that I've identified one or two like test machines that I've got. We call them test nodes. And that has the runtime environment. So I can identify that those will be the three machines that I want to run the test on. But if I want to run the test in a cloud environment or in a local data center that's running something like Eucalyptus, then we also have the cloud uh, clients for Amazon and LabNet and GoGrid and soon Rackspace and soon OpenStack built into this environment so that at test runtime, the test itself will fire up the needed machine instances to run the test. So like you're all familiar with how Jenkins has their master-slave situation. Well, this has the same kind of architecture, but uh, for running the tests themselves, for running the, the test nodes. So when I, when I click play, for example, it would fire up the uh, test injectors within Amazon that are needed to run the test. The test would then um, uh, populate a database of results, and then I'd see those results on the screen. I'm going kind of quick because we've got a lot of information here, but I'm happy to answer your questions as we're going through this. So feel free just to raise your hand or, or shout it out. So that was the uh, kind of the, the test um, uh, authoring environment, and it's it's all cloud-based. And then this is an architectural drawing of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, basically, you've got uh, Jenkins able to make a service call to the AppDance controller, and the controller can either kick off a test that you've defined, like run this Selenium script, um, and and it will do that exactly. But you can also tell uh, Jenkins to call the controller, telling it which Agile story you want to run. Um, see, in the case of uh, Best Buy, they have 450 of those services that they need to test, and a lot of those services are kind of interdependent on one another. So to keep track of those interdependencies, they use Rally. Uh, how many have used Rally? Yeah, it's a fair, fair number. So you know, in Rally, you have an ability to identify like an Agile story, and then you can as associate use cases, and those use cases can be associated with these AppMans tests. Uh, pretty easily, you just kind of click through the interface. And all of that's uh, browser-based or cloud-based. So when the controller kicks off, if you've identified a story, then uh, the controller talks to Rally directly. It gets those uh, relationships. And then it understands which test assets are going to be needed to operate the test. So if it's a bunch of Selenium scripts, then great. You store those Selenium scripts in something like Git or SVN. And then the controller is going to grab the assets that are needed and actually execute the test. The controller has the client for like Amazon built into it. So if the, uh, the instruction of that test scenario was to run the test in one or more cloud instances, then great, the controller will build or instantiate the cloud instances at test runtime. And within each one of these cloud instances is the, uh, the advanced test node as well as the browsers or the SOAP UI runtime that's needed to talk to the actual application under test or the service under test. 
But it, does this kind of architecture make sense so far? Um, it, it was brand new 12 years ago, and I remember trying to explain it to people, and it was like, oh, it, it's too complicated. Um, at this point now, uh, thanks to Jenkins, uh, I don't have to explain this as much to architects. You know, they just kind of get it. It like, kind of makes sense. It all hangs together pretty nicely. So what's going on here when the test is actually running is if the test is of a web app, then great, it fires up Chrome or IE or Firefox or a headless browser like PhantomJS, and that browser actually interacts with the application under test. The test injector, or the test node is, is threaded, so if you need, say, 40 or 50 uh, copies of that test running concurrently, then these, uh, these AWS cloud instances can handle that easily. So if you needed to run a test of, say, 1,000 concurrently running users, then great, you just dial up the number of machines that you need, and this same controller environment handles the, all of the communication protocols with those test injectors. So the other thing to know about this environment is that as the test injectors are running the test, they're going to record how long it took for each step of every command of the test script to operate. And that recording is going back into a results repository. It's typically like MySQL or Hadoop or, or something like that, maybe Oracle. And from, from uh, that results repository then, AppVance Enterprise delivers a dashboard and a scalability index and a set of reports. And it can also deliver notification. So uh, you know, you'll see these IT guys roaming around Best Buy and they literally have like three or four pagers on them and a couple of smartphones. So they're the ones that are looking at the dashboards that this system is outputting so that they get the inevitable call from the business manager saying, you know, why am I seeing my sales go down a little bit? Well, they can look directly at these dashboards and see that the services are running. Now, the other cool thing about this is that it used to be that you'd do performance testing like once, you know, you'd certify it and roll the app out. With this environment, you can do continuous certification. So you can run the performance test, say, all the time. You might not be running, say, uh, 50,000 users all the time. It might be just 500. But by doing that, then the developers, who are eventually going to get the phone call when something doesn't work, can look at how the app is performing actually at the moment. Because all of this is cloud-based and fully integrated with the cloud B system. So this is what we had to come up with for uh, Best Buy's uh, uh, environment. And we, we call it the performance architecture. Um, on your right, you've got a stack of basically TIPCO runtime stuff. So this is uh, TIPCO Business Works, uh, their EMS product, their, their message system. Um, it also includes their monitoring capability like Spotfire and CLE. CLE is their common logging environment. Um, it also includes Hawk. So if those monitoring systems who are monitoring the individual services detect a, uh, a performance bottleneck in how business works is operating, then they uh, interact directly with a, a, a performance management system. And this, this is kind of like their ticket management system. Now the thing we did was to extend it so that it reaches into GitHub and into uh, Jenkins. So GitHub itself would store the, uh, uh, the notification of the slow performing service, and then uh, Jenkins um, kicks off a test immediately through the AppVance Enterprise system, and then we uh, log the results into this results repository. So by the time the developer is kind of rousted out of bed, you know, and say, hey, this, this uh, service isn't working, then they can look directly into the results repository hosted by AppVance Enterprise, match that to the latest build and deploy that Jenkins has done, and see what the, see what the problems are. And since this is all cloud-based, even though they might be operating in India or China or Minneapolis, where their headquarters are, um, they can kick off a test themselves immediately. So if they think like, oh, maybe it was something that happened, uh, you know, say uh, an hour ago, they can kick off a test immediately and see the, the most recent results. Are there any questions about about this? Good. You're all kind of smiling, so I. Yes, go ahead. The, the question is: There is a Jenkins plugin that triggers the build of this. Yes. So. This continuous integration box actually is CloudBees and Jenkins. And then we've built a Jenkins plugin 
which I'll demonstrate next, that shows you how the, the AppFance Enterprise tests are actually kicked off. Yeah. So all of this is available to you now. Uh, you know, it, it, um, we'd be happy, of course, to sell you something, but uh, it, it is all available to you. And we, we open source the, uh, the plugin itself. So the question is, for the results repository, is this only hosted at AppVance Enterprise? No, AppVance really believes in the cloud itself. So the results repository could be your instance of MySQL or Hadoop or Oracle. Um, it's, uh, uh, and so the logs are going to go into that repository. You define where it's going to be. Yeah. Yes? The question is, how do we do mobile testing? So. Um, we do it in, in one of two ways. We're very interested uh, in, in seeing what's going on for iOS and Android testing. And it seems like um, there are uh, extensions to the Selenium project um, that are making gr ground in those areas. So uh, if, you, if you read my blog, which is on the AppVance site, you'll see um, what we're doing in terms of testing native Android apps and native iOS apps. We're basically... Um, supporting and participating in the Appium project. Um, how many of you know about Appium? Oh yeah, so, okay. So, um, uh, Appium is essentially Selenium for, for Android and Selenium for iOS, and the cool thing about Appium, uh, as opposed to any of the other projects, is that Apple itself seems to have blessed it. Um, so, uh, you would define a, uh, say, a Java JUnit test script that would call the Appium APIs, and you'd run that all from within the AppVance uh, environment. And we also test mobile web, so if, if you wanted to test, um, uh, say, your a specific browser, like uh, the Safari browser for, uh, uh, for iOS, then that's, well, that's a, one of the supported browsers. Um, were there other questions? Did that answer your question? Okay. Um, yes? Uh, how do you store your uh, other field artifacts? How do we still store the other build artifacts? So the build artifacts from us are a set of XML documents, which are those test scenarios, and they're typically stored in Git uh, or, or some other source code repository. Uh, the other artifacts might be like, say, a Selenium script, which would be expressed either in the Selenium HTML table format or as a, as a unit test written in a high-level language. Am I getting what your question is? Oh, well, what about other like screenshots? Oh, screenshots. So um, the, the cool thing about the, uh, the runtime environment is that we're supporting things like Selenium and Sahi, um, uh, which support screenshotting directly. And so um, from, those, uh, from those test injectors, you can identify either to store the screenshots on the local machine, like you'd probably be running a local Git client, and then the final uh, stage of the test would be do a commit of those shots into a repository. Or you could choose to store them into a database yourself. Yeah. Okay, so the thing that we found about CloudBees and Jenkins is that it just took us days to, to create this plugin. I mean, it was really a great experience. So um, the, uh, the, the first thing we wanted to do is, is to make sure that you didn't have to do a plugin. Uh, if, uh, you didn't have to use a plugin in Jenkins if you didn't want to, because it's not really required to interface to the AppVance system. So, for example, in a, a very simplistic way, we just created a, an open source um, module, a source code module, which uh, has a, a basically an ant uh, uh, plugin, and so you could call the ant uh, target directly from the AppVance enterprise system. Um, so th this is. Uh, this is an example of it. So um, I, I recorded my use of uh, the CloudBees instance. I have a, an account here that has a Jenkins build service uh, for one of our examples. I click on that. Um, I'm you know, straight into Jenkins. And now if I open the configuration for this project, you'll see that I've just had to do two things. One was to identify the use of the ant targets that, uh, that we've built. And uh, you can do that by using our uh, subversion repository. And then down below, I've got uh, an AMP task that um, will call the AppVance Enterprise system and tell it which of those test scenarios that I, that I want to run. And that's the integration. Now, once, uh, once the test gets started, we've added some stuff to our AMP target 
that makes use of the Jenkins logging. Uh, so uh, here, here I am kicking off a, uh, a build, and now if I click into the console output, even though the tests might be running on these uh, AWS cloud instances, I'm still able to see the, the, the high-level log information from within my Jenkins instance. So, so here you might be able to see that these are individual operations of a performance test at three different levels of load, and then I have a, a, a link down at the bottom that I can click into if I want to see any of the details. But uh, right off the bat, I didn't have to leave the Jenkins environment to see what the performance of, of the app under test was. So that second part of the uh, test um, is configured by just identifying two properties here, identifying where the controller is, uh, that AppFance controller, and then identifying what the scenario uh, name is, the path to that scenario. And that, that's it. So when you're looking at the uh, results within Jenkins, what you'll see is something like this, where it'll show you um, the uh, success or failed operation of the test, and then you can click into the, uh, uh, the URL to see the details. Now, of course, this um, fully supports you know, CloudBee's uh, operation of Jenkins as a free running service, so I can also see whether the test results are gonna change in overall time to operate the test uh, over time, and that, that's a good first indication of when my app is in trouble. So I'll give you an example of kind of the, uh, the results that you can see when you drill down into, the, into our results uh, dashboard. So uh, for example, this is gonna show you a uh, transaction report where it's showing you how long it took for each of the operations of that test script to operate over the given test time. And you can see there were a couple of like outliers. By clicking on them, I'm able to see uh, drill down into the request and response that that test script uh, used to talk to either the app or the service. I can also um, uh, add a monitoring capability to the same performance results. So if I wanted to see, well, how did the CPU look like on those test injectors as the test was operating, then great, that, that's showing me uh, within one correlated report how the CPU changed depending on what lo level of load there was to the um, to the test. And then of course I can go back and see, well, how did this test run say a, a week ago or, or a day ago or an hour ago? And be able to do comparisons between them. The monitoring doesn't only work on the test injectors. I could also install our monitor on the app server, on the web server, on the database server, even on my load balancer. And if I'm using something like TIPCO or Oracle, I could install it, the monitor on those machines too all of those monitored results then are going into the same results repository so that I can correlate uh, what's going on at all of the different tiers of the app. And uh, by doing that, we get to take the heat away from you know, the people who aren't causing the performance bottleneck. What am I doing on time? So I've got about 10 minutes left. Um, so, uh, so uh, I think we have enough time for some more questions then. So uh, I kind of blazed through that much faster than I thought. Uh, so uh, the, I, you know, I feel kind of like um, we're akin to what the Jenkins project has gone through over the years. Um, Testmaker started when I was at Sun. Um, it's something that I needed to write for myself to um, test the Sun community server, which I was the chief architect of. And, uh, a friend of mine convinced me that open source was the right way to go. You know, he said, hey, plenty of other testers and developers are going to need what you've built. And so I'm, I'm happy to report that now we have about 3 million downloads of the test maker system and about 600,000 uh, testers and developers are using it. The thing that's very different between the test, my test maker experience and Hudson and Jenkins is that for a uh, continuous integration environment, it applies to everybody in this room. Whereas to be a performance testing expert, I bet maybe 10 of you uh, have the kind of background and, and the skill set to, to be really successful with it. So I never had a giant community with you know, 10,000 commits being done every, every month. Uh, a lot of this work has come about from these large commercial customers saying, we really need to accomplish more agility in what we're doing, but we don't know the first thing about Agile. Um, so, what I would encourage you to do is, uh, you know, after the talk, take my card, take my uh, data sheet, and um, let's stay in touch because performance testing isn't a science as much as it is an art. 
and say at least a quarter of it is dealing with the personalities involved. Um, you know, when you go and tell some developer, hey, your app or your service isn't running fast, a lot of times you have to get past the initial defensiveness before you get actually into the, the reasons for the code. Um, so, um, uh, for the code to run slowly. But this method that I've built uh, and this set of tools has been successful at these companies like PepsiCo and Best Buy. As a matter of fact, we're doing the holiday testing now so that Best Buy will make, make it past another Black Friday. That's happening this week. And then PepsiCo will be launching their biggest campaign of this year uh, around the Xbox One launch. Uh, that's coming up in two weeks and we're doing the testing of that now. So not only do you get from us uh, this infrastructure, but also a set of methodologies and uh, uh, an ability to run your test if, if you need us to. Okay, so uh, that, that's it. If, if, um, you know, if, if you're wondering about like whether your own project, your own team is ready for this kind of environment, if you're trying to drive like 100% of the end user experience of your app, uh, and you're having problems, then I'd say give, give us a call, uh, because this, this is our area of, of expertise. So I'm, I'm uh, here for what, another five minutes and happy to take your questions. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, thanks for your attention.